Okay. Hello, everyone. We are starting maybe a couple seconds early just so we make sure that we are doing the right thing today because we are minus Aaron and Betsy and it's Alex and me. So we just want to make sure everything is all set up and ready to go and I need a thumbs up if we're good. All right. Welcome, welcome. I could, I could do a Jimmy Fallon. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I hope you had a wonderful weekend, holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah, all of that. Uh, we had a wonderful time. Alex flew in a week ago, and we have been madly working and playing and having a wonderful time. And it's just so great to be around my one and only daughter for the holidays. So uh, Alex is going to actually start us off today, and she's going to give you the rundown on the So Confident program, 2022, Series 11. Alex is the manager of that program, so she runs everything about it, and from Cleveland, by the way, uh, remotely, and you and I visit about it somewhat, yeah, a little yeah. bit. But uh, she's going to tell you all about it, and I'm going to make sure I'm behind the camera. Well, I was going to say, who's a, who's a So Confident member, and have you guys raise your hand? But I guess we're online, so <laughs> can't really raise your hand. But we have a yearly and a monthly subscription program. And um, you can't see my little sheet here, but if you go to swimmingworkshop.com, you can become a yearly subscriber for only $382.50 or a monthly subscriber for only $40 uh, a month, $39.99. So those are kind of our two options. If you wanna be a subscriber, you get 15% off all year. And sorry, I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> I guess was out of breath listening to my mom's monologue. So, <laughs> uh, so those are our two ways to join as a yearly subscriber uh, or a monthly subscriber, or you can just join by the month. So if you want to do that, the projects release on the first of the month every month, and you can join, yeah, the first of the month every month. <laughs> and you can join for $49.99 if you just want to join for one month. Um, so if you want to join in January, you can join on January 1st. If you want to join in February, you can join February 1st. And it's uh, just great content. We had such great feedback from our 2021 members. And, you know, everyone is just super happy to be involved in Linda's excellent development of this content. I mean, again, if you want to just write a comment in the, in the section there just saying how you appreciated her videos and uh, all of that, I know a lot of you remember. So, loved all your guys' feedback. So, thank you. Let's talk a little bit about our projects coming up. So, our first month in January is the Sterling Jacket. We're going to have three kits for this jacket. This is the first one, and we have a second one. Sorry, we're going to have five kits. I didn't know that. <laughs> five kits, uh, all kind of of the same colorway. Uh, so we have this kind of burnt orange, this creamy off-white piece. And I just love these fabrics. So um, this is a new pattern. And our first three months are kind of of the same colorway, of the same kind of ensemble that's kind of our theme for 2021 is a wardrobing wearable wardrobe for your whole year so every three months i guess you could say we're kind of doing it in sections so the first three months you get a jacket a shirt which i'll show you in a second and pants and then every fourth every after every third month there's a bonus month where there's extra instructional content that's coming to you as well. So after April, then we move into another set of three pairings of wardrobes and garments, and then another kind of bonus month, and then another set of three garments. So this, again, is the first one for January, the Sterling Jacket. Brand new jacket, you've got this, uh, just these really cool details with a rolled hem or a traditional kind of surged edge um, for the details of the finishings of the jacket. Our second project in February is the pants. The pants. The, because this shirt is actually uh, March. a new pattern. It's called the Crane Street Tee. I tried to remember what Linda's middle school was. Crane. And it was Crane. And so I thought, well, let's call it the Crane Street Tee. So that's why we named the shirt that. 
But first, then first is February. So this is the Hudson Pants. We all know this pattern. So the Hudson Pants, there's new details on the bottom of this pant. So uh, we could probably talk a little bit more about this effect, but it's kind of like a, looks like a ribbon kind of tied through the front here, I like to say. But I love these plaids. Again, we're going to have different colorways and different kits for these pants for the Hudson. And again, as you guys know, with 2021, we always provide kits for every month's project. So if you like the pattern, we always provide options for kits with all kinds of different custom picked fabric from Linda. If you don't want a kit, of course, you can pick your own fabric, maybe from your stash, or we can give you recommendations of other fabric you can use in your project. So here we are in March already. This is the Crane Street tee. So this is kind of a wonderful basic knit tee. Again, we're going to have kits for this in various colors of knits. And then on the back, it's got these kind of billowy panels that um, kind of have the, this effect in the back only. So kind of a simple tee on the front with some added detail on the back. So again, this is the Crane Street tee. Crane Street Tea. So you're looking at all three projects right here for the first three months. And that is our first three months of So Confident. So again, join yearly and you get all 12 months for $382.50. It's 10% off until January 7th. And then if you want to join monthly, you can join monthly for all 12 months. You get charged $39.99 every month for 12 months and you get to join us that way too. Otherwise, just join us every month and we'll see you that way. So, yeah. Would you like to add anything, Linda? No, I think you did a good job. Um, those prices are the 10% off price. And so if you don't get signed up before January 7th, then the price does go up to $425 for the year. And, and the monthly option to pay goes away. Right. Yes, our, our $39.99 monthly subscriber option is just available until January 7th also. That way we can kind of cut off the 12 payments of the month. So if you don't want to pay everything up front, we kind of provide that bulk option as a yearly subscriber. We've been doing that for 10 years really. Uh, and so you can do that. But if you don't want to do that, the monthly option is a great option. You just get charged $39.99 a month every month and you're able to still join and get kind of those perks of being a yearly member. So. There's also a, a Facebook group, and uh, it's private, which is fun, and uh, Q&As with Linda on the third Friday of every month, and um, so we'd love to have you guys. It'd be really fun. All right, we're ready to, I think, talk about what we have on. All right. Well, it's a lazy Tuesday over here, so we're kind of wearing, I guess you could call them like elevated loungewear, but we, of course, make it look really cool. We're wearing like cool sneakers. My mom changed her shoes like three times this morning to make sure she was wearing the right shoes with her pants. Um, so do you want to come up or am I just... Well, we'll both talk about it. We'll talk show what we it. have on and what we have on the dress form. So, so today is all about the, the Mason top and joggers. Yes. And so as you can see, we're kind of doing a black and white effect. I made this shirt about a year ago, I think like right when the pattern came out, maybe a couple years now. And I, it's probably my favorite shirt pattern Linda has. Um, this is from a, a white jersey knit, kind of a, a medium weight, just a really nice feel to it. I, I wear it often just with things like this, with joggers, with jeans. It's really casual. So I've had it as a solid white tee ever since I made it, but um, I've always had this idea. I've always wanted to do embroidery on it. So we're going to talk a little bit about our embroidery with this garment. Linda did a little bit on hers as right. well. Well, this is the pattern that came out a year ago, January. So this is sort of a year anniversary of a re on top and jogger. So this was the first project in series 10, So Confident. Uh, the, I think the top was first in January and the joggers were second in February. So um, we made it out of a stripe. This was a kit. Last year, you can see here uh, the details a little bit more because of the uh, contrasting solid of the sleeve and the bottom band. It's a little bit harder to see in the white and the black. So Alex has it on just like the pattern, 
and I have it on with a modified sleeve length and sleeve detail. And I just did a little, well, which I'm going to talk about. I'm going to get into the details of how to change this sleeve into a long sleeve. And Alex is going to talk about the embroidery. So we both had this idea, you had the idea of, of embroidering, and you did a wonderful job, which you're going to talk about. And I attempted to do something which failed, so I did a little running stitch around the neck, and that was it. So, all right. Well, I think that's the great thing about embroidery. It can be as elaborate or as simple as you want, even just those special details is kind of what makes right. it. So, All right, so you start about your embroidery and... So, like I said, I've wanted to do embroidery on this for a long time, so I started sketching some things on my iPad. Because this is called the mace on top, it means house in French. So I don't know if you can see this, it's just some basic quick sketches. Are you able to kind of get that in there? So I did like a little pink house sketch. I actually did some floor plans. I wrote out some handwriting because I had done a previous project where I had done some handwriting around a neck binding. And then I ended up kind of just keeping it pretty simple and thinking about windows. So if you can see this little sketch, I was, you know, there's lots of ways to consider how to actually transfer a sketch or what you're drawing onto fabric. But actually for me, when I did this, I just sketched it right on the t-shirt. <laughs> so there are some tools that I'm gonna show you. So this clover blue pen with an eraser is a great way for me to just consider, I'm just gonna sketch right on this garment and see how it goes. If I didn't like it, I knew I could erase it. So instead of me sketching on the iPad, I just ended up saying, all right, I'm going to sketch on my shirt, which is exactly what I did. There's an Instagram account I like called Year in Stitches. It's all one word, I guess, uh, on Instagram. The handle is, again, Year in Stitches. And it follows a lady that just stitches one thing every day for a year. And so I thought about that with garments, how maybe with this white tee, I could stitch one thing and then come back to it a couple weeks later, maybe a day later if I wanted to kind of think about a year in stitches with a garment, I could consider if I got really into this, stitching one thing every day. So then by the end of the year, I would have 365 little sketched stitches on a shirt, which I think would be kind of fun. Um, I follow some designers, like Nike just did a collaboration with a store called Dover Street Market and Nike had this shirt that had all kinds of Nike motifs in all different styles. There was handwriting mixed with um, kind of paisley motifs mixed with like blocks and it was just a mixed style shirt and it was very cool. So again, that was kind of my inspiration for this. Um, it's just kind of a mixed media type of thing. So I took what I sketched and started embroidering. So again, my vision with this is maybe to consider what if I were to add other house embroidered elements onto the shirt. So then by the end of the year, at the end of some time, I have this kind of Maison embroidered shirt with all these different house things. Because as you may know, if Linda has shared, both of us are, are new homeowners. So it would be kind of fun to have a kind of a Maison thing with different house embroidered things. So anyway, um, I, like I said, sketched on the t-shirts, and then I just used a DMC six-strand embroidery thread um, for my little windows. So I have six little windows here in all different colors. Around the outline of the window, I backstitch, and then on the inside or interior of the window, I just did a basic running stitch. So it was as simple as you could get. Again, stitched right on that with the blue eraser pen and any of the blue that still showed through, I just erased it after I stitched it. Um, I used little embroidery scissors. So we do have a couple here I'm gonna show today, both from Studio Carta. These are called rooster scissors. And these are still in the box. I don't wanna open them, but they're tiny little red scissors. I might open them this side. these guys they're so cute so you know you don't need elaborate scissors oh well yes you do well so i mean 
Amazing. You need really cute scissors. You need cute scissors, but you don't need, well, I guess what I meant to say was like big scissors. Yeah, yeah. You might as well get something cute and wonderful just to kind of have with your embroidery things on hand as you stitch on your garments. So these are the two scissors that we have. They're both on sale today or through this week. Um, the rooster scissors and the small red mini scissors from Studio Carta. So get yourself some cool embroidery scissors. And as far as embroidery thread, you can use what a, any kind of embroidery floss you want. Um, like I said, I used DMC six strand embroidery thread and, thread, and I split it in half. So I was using three threads to thread my needle. And get yourself some hand stitching needles. So we have these gold eye embroidery needles that I used um, to stitch. We also have some other ones on our site. Some, those are Japanese. Some Japanese embroidery needles. Yep. It's all about the packaging, though. These ones are yeah, absolutely <laughs> You cool. can hang those on the tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, if you have trouble ever threading your needle, the eyes maybe aren't big enough, or you're actually using maybe a thicker thread or something that needs just extra help and attention, we do have all-purpose threaders. These are really nice and wonderful to be able to thread, your, thread through first, and then you stick this little tip through the needle, pull it through, and it threads the thread for you so it's very handy so those are kind of my tools tips and tricks as far as embroidery so who knows i've again i've said i've wanted to embroider on this for a long time and i just got to it but it would be fun to add more things and um but i think it was fun for me to consider kind of sketching first but then also to think i'll just sketch right on the garment so i think your idea of adding to this over time is a really cool idea yeah window elements doors uh, brackets. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, that Instagram handle, Year in Stitches, is kind of what she does. She takes one stitch, basically one style of embroidery stitch, does one thing a day for a year. And yeah. by the end of the year, she has a full piece. And she starts it over every year. So I'm sure in 2022, she's doing something totally different. So Laura Adler just uh, commented in the chat that she has uh, was inspired by Ecta Call someone who I talked about on Instagram, or not on Instagram, on uh, Facebook Live, as a, a stitcher. But she, Laura has painted some fabric and she wants to embroider it now, which oh, is a good fine. idea. That'd be cool. So drawing it, painting it, mm -hmm. sketching it freehand. Mm -hmm. What I was gonna do was uh, write out the word Maison in Morse code, dots and dashes. And I love the idea, I was gonna do a big block of it, but I couldn't uh, get it on this particular fabric that I used, which is very wiggly, um, to, to really do straight, straight, straight lines that look like Morse code, so I backed off of it. But I am gonna do that on a fabric more like what you have on, which has a little more stability. I think that'd be a cool idea. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong with a white tee, and you can't go wrong with a black tee. Right. And so Linda's got her black tee on, and we've, we're going to show you guys some fabrics in a bit, but we do have, of course, fabrics, black and white fabrics that were kind of inspirational to this look. Um, so a solid white shirt and a solid black shirt go a long way. So. Why don't you show them your um, <clears throat> London embroidery design that's on the rack on the Berwick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... For those of you that maybe don't know, I lived in London for two years studying at London College of Fashion um, in between 2017 and 2019. So I moved back right before the pandemic. And um, at that time, I was developing creative ideas for businesses and something I liked. So obviously, you can tell I like, ever since Linda and I got into embroidery, I've just kind of liked the idea of adding different things. So uh, one of the ideas I had was the, this idea called stitch kits or stitch um, kind of creating stencils to add to garments. So like Linda said, this is the Berwick Street tunic. And this is um, a... Uh, Skyline? Well, this is a oh. variation of the pattern, I guess just through the fabric by using two different fabrics, obviously black and white. And um, on this variation, we've stitched the London skyline, which is a sketch that I drew. And we transferred that sketch over to the shirt on the white side. And then um, this whole sketch is done with a back stitch. 
So not your regular running stitch, but in order to create that complete line effect, that's what's called a back stitch. There's some French knots in there for the London eye, but you've got the London eye, you've got Big Ben, you've got the Shard, you've got the Tower of London, and you've got St. Paul's Cathedral in there. So this is the London skyline uh, embroidery. We have it on the website actually as both a hand embroidery PDF that you can purchase or as a machine embroidery. We've, we developed that as well. So if you're a machine embroiderer, that is something you can get if you like, um, if you don't want to do something by hand. But fun to think about adding embroidery to garments. So this is a classic for sure. So I taught, I did a class on this a couple years ago. Some of you might have been there, but um, who knows? More of it, more of it might be coming if you guys enjoy it. But um, you're gonna see, uh, like Linda said on her shirt, her black shirt. Um, she just did a simple running stitch so if you want to switch or I yeah can, let's switch and keep all right monologuing it all right my turn so yes I just did a simple running stitch in white uh, around the neck I had applied the neck binding and then I cover stitched that to finish it off and then I just did the running stitch in between the two rows of stitching from the cover stitch so it was real easy it was all I could sort of muster up last night in my uh, creative mode so I want to talk to you though about lengthening the sleeve of the Maison because not everybody likes the length of the sleeve year round. You might want a, a longer sleeve, you might want a slimmer sleeve. So I want to t talk you through the process of how I did this. So it started by deciding that I actually wanted to raise the arms eye of this shirt. It has a very large arms eye and, and it's meant to be that. It's designed to be a very oversized uh, t-shirt. But I, I thought I would bring this arms eye up a bit. So I decided that I would bring it up an inch. So I just simply extended the side seam, the cutting line of the side seam up one inch and then I needed to reconnect that. So in order to do that, I used a French curve. Now I'm not gonna take this out of the package, but I wanted to get that back into the original line of the arm's eye pretty quickly. So I knew by doing that, that I would, um, do we have a problem? He's just saying there's a bit of an echo. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, so I knew if, when I did that, that I would be changing the circumference of the sleeve and the arm's eye. And so I measured the original pattern using my curve runner along the seam allowance line. That's the black line here. Measured the front, measured the back, added them together to get a total circumference. And then I repeated that by marking a seam allowance line on the new line, which is partially red and then blends into the black. And by doing that, I discovered that my sleeve was going to be an inch and three eighths smaller. So I needed to deal with the sleeve. So here's my sleeve pattern. Can you see all of this, even down to the bottom? Okay, all right. So I also decided how much I wanted to lengthen it. So I stood in front of the mirror and I put a tape measure to where I wanted the sleeve. And I decided that I wanted a sleeve that was nine inches longer, something right below my wrist. So when you are altering a pattern, lengthening and shortening an, a, a pattern piece is the very first thing that you do before you even deal with widths and all of that. So I extended the straight of grain line into both parts of the pattern piece, spread, cut this along the lengthen and shorten line, which we have on the original sleeve pattern, and added nine inches, inserted some paper, and married the straight of grain lines. That's the very first thing. Then I needed to decide how wide I wanted the sleeve and if I wanted a cuff or not. And I decided I wanted a cuff. 
And because the hip band ha uh, around the bottom of the shirt is finished at two inches, I decided I would emulate that and keep the uh, sleeve binding, sleeve band at two inches finished as well. So I originally thought, well, I will shorten this nine inches by two inches to allow for the extension of the cuff. And then I decided, no, I'm not going to do that because I want this sort of overlap or ease or whatever you call this. And two inches seemed about right. So I left the nine inches and added the cuff. So I have this two inch drape at the bottom of the sleeve. I took a shirt out of my closet and measured the width of the sleeve. I took a tape measure. And of course, you all know about my tape measure with the little D ring. That allows you to measure things by yourself so you can figure out how much circumference you want of the cuff. And I decided that I wanted my finished cuff to be about seven and a half inches. So I realized that I had measured the bottom of the sleeve at about 13 and a half finished and the bottom of the cuff was going to be seven and a half inches. So I knew I was going to gather a lot of sleeve to the cuff. So I found the center of the sleeve, which I'd already done with my straight of grain line. And I knew I wanted the bottom of it to be 13 and a half inches. So I divided that in half and made sure that I added an equal amount on each side of this center line. So this is to my 13 and a half finished. Needed to add seam allowances to that. I go back up here and remember that I had a difference of an inch and three eighths total for the sleeve circumference. I divided that in half and of course that's a weird fraction. So I just used three quarters of an inch, which is really an inch and a half. So I'm an eighth of an inch off if you really are doing the math. But in a knit, I figured I would be fine. So I marked a point at three quarters of an inch in here and here. Added my seam allowances down here and took my hip curve and drew a nice curve to connect these new points. So that was the shape of my sleeve. I think a longer sleeve is nice when it has a little bit of a curve to it rather than just a straight line. I think it's a little more graceful. So all I did then was fold the pattern in half and trace this line onto the other side to connect these two points. And of course, I folded up the bottom so that I could get the correct angle at the bottom. Now, the bottom of the sleeve of the Maison normally has a one inch hem allowance. And because I was going to add it to a cuff, I only needed 5 eighths. So I just drew a 5 eighths inch seam allowance here instead of using the one inch hem. So then I had to create my cuff piece. I added, this is my seven and a half plus two five eighths inch seam allowances. So uh, that would be eight and three quarters, two inches and two inches because this cuff gets folded plus a seam allowance and a seam allowance. So my piece is five and a quarter by eight and three quarters. Now everybody's numbers are gonna be different than mine, but I'm using these numbers to illustrate how you achieve the look that you want. And you probably have something in your closet that you can measure and look at and study a little bit, get in front of the mirror with, with a tape measure and figure some things out. The other thing I did to this pattern is I decided that I didn't want the hip band to hug my body. I wanted it to be loose, more like an extension and just a detail band. So I actually added two inches to the width of the hip band which essentially is going up one size. So I just used one size larger on the hip band pattern and used it to put it on the bottom of the shirt. And I didn't really have to ease very much. I liked that look. But you can, you can make it any size you want. You can make it real tight. You can make it real loose. You can leave it off. You can do a lot of different things. So um, I wanted to show you a mace on top that Kathy made, which I think I've shown before. But one of the things you can uh, think about is that the sleeves can be a woven, not a knit. 
Her hip band is also made in a woven. So she has done some pieced kimono fabrics across the bottom, and instead of adding a cuff, she just lengthened the sleeve like I did and put a piece of elastic in a casing and drew it up in that way. So there's a couple of ways to think about a longer sleeve, but sleeves right now are really interesting. You know, Bessie was on here a couple, three weeks ago with her very fancy full sleeve, and I've sent her some pictures since, and she's, of course, all over it anyway. But all these layered sleeves and puffy sleeves are very, very popular right now. So think about uh, leaving your sleeve a little bit loose, a little bit soft, a little bit drapey, and you'll be right in style. So do we have any questions about the sleeve part of it? or the embroidery part of it. Well, there's some comments about how nice it is to see the changing of this pattern, really like really liking moving up the arm's eye. So, yeah. And that arm's eye can be moved up even more. I just arbitrarily chose one inch because I measured a shirt that I own, that's in my closet, that I liked, and I measured that. But it could be a couple of inches. It could probably even go more than that. But, you know, you don't want to change the character of the garment too much. So I thought an inch was a little bit of a compromise. Can you explain how you came up with the 13 and a half? Yes, I did that by measuring a, a T-shirt pattern in my closet. And I put a tape measure across the bottom of the sleeve. It's a sleeve that I like. And that's exactly how I did it. Now, I think the other way to go is if you choose or you figure out the circumference of your cuff, and let's say it's seven inches in circumference, we'll double that and make this 14. So that's pretty much the ratio that I ended up with. So you could go at it backwards or forward, however. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um that's so far the questions that have come through about the okay. face on. All Couple right. questions about the embroidery. Okay. Um, for for uh, who was it? Deb, you asked about the temporary stabilizer under the embroidery on knits, such as a stitch and tear. I've learned actually. I've I have the preference. I've never really used a stabilizer. I don't even use a hoop when it comes to stitching embroidery on knits. So. That's kind of an Alabama Channon technique, I guess, that I've inherited. But I, I did not use any stabilizer on this, and um, I didn't use any stabilizer on uh, the... Linda didn't use any on hers, and I, w I wouldn't going forward on knit. Now, the London Embroidery Skyline, that's a linen viscose, and that was... I, that well, we didn't be, use a stabilizer, but we used a hoop. Yeah, you could stabilize yeah. that with a hoop, but... I would use a hoop if you're using the machine embroidered design on this, your normal stabilizer and, and hoop uh, for your machine. But for hand embroidery, you could do this without a hoop, you could do it without stabilizer, or you could use a hoop. But I don't think a stabilizer is necessary. One more question about the Maison. Why did you turn up the 5 8 inch hem at the bottom of the sleeve since you were putting it on the band? Wouldn't a straight line on the sleeve work? I turned it up so that I could trace the detail of this profile of the seam coming into it. So it has the same angle so that when it is uh, attached to the cuff, it'll fit. But then, it, you know, it's back down to use as the cutting line. That's just a pattern. Obviously, a straight line would work, but you'd be, it wouldn't line up precisely with what it's being sewn to. When you measured the length of the sleeve, where did you measure from? Your shoulder or the pattern seam? Oh, from the pattern seam, I determined from the pattern piece where the maison fall, fell on me, and then I measured from that point to the distance of the sleeve. Yeah, you have to figure out, you have to measure the shoulder line on the pattern 
So you know where this seam is, and then you measure down to figure the length of the sleeve. Um, it looks like the question about the pattern with the London embroidery has been answered, but again, that pattern that has the London skyline on it is the Berwick Street tunic pattern. And right. um, we've posted the link to that pattern in the chat. Okay. The tape measure with the D ring, is that available on your website? No, I made this myself. And you can too. Now the tape measure, of course, is available on our website. This is the one that has the number one at both ends on both si each side. So I bought a little D-ring, a little half-inch D-ring, and put it on the one-inch mark and taped it, wrapped it around and taped it. And so when I take my measurements, I have to remember to add an inch because I've taken away an inch of the numbers on the tape, but if I put that D-ring right at one inch, then it's an easy thing to remember. But this is what I do to make, you know, use to measure arm, you know, girths, places where I just can't hold both ends. When you're measuring by yourself, it's hard to do that. So but you can make, make this yourself, but it takes a tape measure that has a one at each end. And we did leave a comment, but it does look like it's out of stock, but we we'll, should be back in shortly. So Yeah, I'm surprised at that. I, I'm wondering if we'll check that out when we leave. Uh, it's unusual for us not to have them. So we'll check that out. And when you measure your arm length, is your arm straight or bent? It's bent just a little bit, about like that. Um, and regarding the question about so confident, so again, the, the monthly projects release every month. So if you're not interested in a yearly subscription or a monthly subscription, and you just want to join for the month, then those projects release on the first of every month. So if you're interested in joining in January for the Sterling Jacket, um, that will be available to purchase for $49.99 on January 1st, potentially a couple of days earlier. Sometimes it's on a little bit before um, so that we can promote it, but it's always available on the first of the month. Right. So you can do that for any of the projects. And again, if you're a monthly subscriber and you pay a little bit less, you get a discount, but those projects still also release on the first of the month. So everything just comes to you every month. It's pretty, pretty nice and easy. So, All right, do we have the 12 inch wheel in stock? Yes, we have curve runners in stock. We do. This has been one of the best tools to come my way in a long time. I've loved it. I used to march that end of, edge of the tape measure around on things and I hope I was pretty accurate. This is so accurate, down to the eighth of an inch. Could you show the tunic again? and? There was a couple comments, um, a comment from someone who mentioned it would be fun to have a, an embroidery class or a kind of an, a Natalie Channon style technique. Well, I, that's in the, it's in the, in our, in the wind here. To it's do in something. the wheelhouse. It's in the wheelhouse. All right. Some more questions might come in, but maybe right. you could talk about All right. The well, just remember that uh, the Maison top pattern also includes the pattern for the joggers, which Alex has on and I have on, and here they are. It does have this interesting waistband, which has an inch and a half elastic in it, but also a drawstring. And we do sell the drawstrings in a few colors. We have black and gray and blue and pink and a few colors. And it's a really, uh, I think, fun detail and very Lululemon uh, detail. We do have, remember, the easy threaders that are fantastic to thread drawstrings. We also have some more kits of this, as I understand it. So this is another um, one of the kits that we have for the Maison Jogger. But we do have the shoelaces, 
and they are on sale. When you order them, you get a pair. You only need one, but uh, you'll get two. They're like an elastic shoelace, so they're quite, you know, you know, they're stretchy. So, shall we talk about fabrics? Yeah, there's a few questions about the fabric for your top, which I know you're going to show. Yes. And right. um, the question about um, just some of the fabrics from the kits in So Confident 2022. All right. We have some of the kits left from 2022. And honestly, I can't stand up here and tell you exactly which ones. I think we have some solids for the tops. We have the black and white stripe. I think we have this dotted one. At least we have the fabric, so we can certainly make a kit. Um, and bottoms, I would have to look at the range, but we, do have, we still have kits from the top and the bottom. Awesome. And the kits for 2022. Oh, kits for, for 2022. The sterling jacket. Sorry. We can show some of those. All right. So I don't have all the colors up here, but we have auburn, the natural color. We have an olive, green, navy, and black. And each one of them has a coordinating plaid or solid linen for the coordinating pants and each one of those colorways has a coordinating jersey with a contrasting texture for one of the panels in the back. So five colorways for all three garments. Sterling jacket, Hudson pants variation, and Crane Street tee. So that's what's coming, and, and those kits are, will be on the website January 1. And for quick reference, uh, would you like to show your shoes? Oh, my shoes? Well, I have on my high top uh, Golden Goose sneakers, my favorite ones. Do I need to hold my foot up? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. She, like I said, she changed three times. I changed socks. I changed shoes. I finally did no socks and whatever. But these are the, um, the Maison joggers as well in a nice uh, sort of dusty pink color. They're pretty darn comfortable. I love them. Good pocket. Um, question about the kits. No, not all, not all three kits will be released. No, just the January. jacket kits will be available January 1st. Yeah. And then so. the pants kits February 1st. And we have the fabrics for all of them. But we're, we're doling them out. <laughs> so January 1st, you guys have got a lot of information. So yeah. if you're already subscribing to So Confident, you'll get an email. But of course, you can self-direct yourself and check the website as well on January 1st. We have some people last year that would wait up until midnight and just <laughs> be on the website ready to go on the first of the month. So. The yellow joggers, can you show the bottom cuff? Sure. Now, some people have made this pant without the bottom cuff. You're seeing joggers both ways. So the cuff is clearly optional. All right, I think we can talk about fabric. All right, let's talk about fabric. All right. Um, so Alex and I pulled some uh, varieties of neutrals, blacks, and whites, just because it's such a sharp, and that's a really good word for it too, sharp look. So everybody needs gray joggers, a gray mason top. This is a beautiful viscose knit. Uh, rayon of bamboo and spandex. It's, it's weighty. It's the same weight that I have on, only in a nice heather charcoal gray. Now we have these plaids, a couple of plaids, both this one, which I've shown before. I think I showed this one 
maybe a while back, I can't remember exactly, um, but this one I don't believe that we've shown, which is more of a natural heather charcoal. And I wanted to show you that Deb uh, used this fabric to make a Hudson top. And isn't that just the cutest thing? So, but I think it'd make a great Hudson or Maison top or joggers. Hildegard, who is our accountant here, uh, made some plaid joggers for her daughter-in-law for Christmas. And I asked her yesterday if they were successful, and she said, yes, she wore them four days in a row. So apparently, this is uh, the look. All right, this is a black viscose knit, rayon viscose, and this is the fabric that I have on. I purposely made this out of the fabric. And this is a fabric that, of course, we try to stock all of the time. So we have quite a bit of it now, and we'll, if we run out, we'll, order, we'll reorder it. So it's not something that uh, we're not going to have. But it's a, a beautiful drape, beautiful, beautiful fabric to sew with. My washing machine is broken at home, or actually it never reworked after we moved, and I haven't gotten the appliance people out to fix it. And so I did not pre-wash this fabric. But I'm not too worried about that, because this is not a fabric that shrinks much, if any. And so I know that I will probably wash this in cooler water from now on, but it's not, I didn't have to worry about it. All right, this is a, this is a classic sweat looking fabric. Uh, this is polyester, but it has a little bit of a texture to it, but it has a nice uh, weave to it. I like this uh, strie uh, look of this fabric. Now, you've seen us using these stripes, of course, but this time we've never shown them in French terry. And this is lightweight French terry, which is one of my favorite fabrics. You see it everywhere in all, from Eileen Fisher to Athleta to Lululemon to wherever. And we also have it in... Uh, Black and white, same thing. Black and white stripe in French terry. So you have that loopy side to it and the smooth side. Really a great feel to it. And this is rayon and cotton and spandex. So it's nice and soft. Then of course, we have the classic white, also viscose has a little bit of cotton in it, I think. The tag is not on it, so we would have to check that. But like Alex said, you know, we forget to make just a great white shirt and a black shirt. We're always thinking color and pattern and all of that, but what we put on most days is perhaps something sort of simple. And I feel pretty put together today in a black mason top. This is all cotton with a little bit of spandex. I love this uh, polka dot that has some little patterns within the polka dots to make it really interesting. This is a little stripe with a little um, hourglass motif to it. It's interesting because this looks like it's black and white. The stripes are black and the little hourglasses are deep dark blue. So I don't know, I just think that's kind of interesting. Now this is a fabric the kind of fabric that I look for all the time and have a terrible time finding. But you have a knit that is a stripe on one side and a dot on the other. And these are hard to find. And we finally came up with the black and white version and the gray and white version. So here's the, the dot with the stripe. And the dot and the stripe. Really soft, buttery soft. So it's like a double weave, but you don't really know that. It's not heavy, it's not thick, but it is two layers that have been connected. So gray and white, black and white. And then we found this glazed lightweight ponte knit that would just be fantastic for either the top or the bottom. I, I sort of particularly think it would be fantastic joggers. So this is ponte knit, so it's solid on one side, and then it has this glazing of this animal print on it. 
and I'm, I'm just crazy about that. We have the classic gray and white stripe, if you're not into the total contrast of black and white. We have gray and white that goes, I think it'd be pretty with the white or even black or a color. And then I brought this back. We had, I had this out last week and we were showing it in gray. This is the laser cut uh, knit, but this would be fun for even just pieces and parts of a garment. So there's a white side to this gray fabric. You could use either side, but think about this just for sleeves. Use it with uh, the, the Ponte knit or any of these knits and use the laser cut for the sleeves. That would be really fun. I think that's our fabrics. Can you say again what the fabric content for the double-sided stripe dot is? Uh, yes. It is polyester and rayon. Yeah, they are very soft. They're, yeah, it's... Super soft. Yeah. Can the joggers be made and woven? The joggers can be made and woven. You would have to just measure and make sure you have enough ease. Because I'm wearing the joggers with quite a bit of ease in them anyway, uh, which I think is how these joggers are designed to be, not skin tight. So yes, they can be made and woven, absolutely. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I hope I don't sneeze. <laughs> I think I'm going to sneeze. Um, we do have a few so confident questions. Okay. So what might be a fun idea too for everyone to kind of stay tuned about this? I know that it's, it's a very exciting time and you're there's high anticipation for what's to come. We, Linda and I could probably do a little uh, video just for our So Confident members and even kind of post something later on. We can talk a little bit more about the projects and kind of what to expect, but um, we can think about that. But in the meantime, a couple of your questions. The size range for the Sterling jacket? Sterling jacket is extra small to XXL. Um, it is not a generous size, but it's not uh, fitted by any means. So I wore that one, which is a small. The other week I had the neutral one on in a medium. Both of them looked good on me. So I think you can uh, figure out whether you like something with a little more ease or not so much ease. But that's extra small to XXL. Yeah. And uh, what's the size of jogger you're wearing? I'm wearing a small jogger. And I'm going to come up here and show this top right fabric closely. This one? Yeah. OK. You know, back to the whole so confident thing. I know you, you all think we talk about this all the time, but and we do. <laughs> but we, we build almost our entire thinking process of a year around the concept of So Confident. And it's where a lot of the ideas go, the fashion ideas, the technical ideas. And granted, we bring out other products, patterns, do other things as well. But it's the heart and soul of what we do here. And I hope you will consider joining. I, I thought last year was the, last year was the first year that we, I've ever done a video component. All the previous years have been PDF slide presentations. Last year was the first year for question and answers. Last year was the first year for Facebook uh, Facebook private group. Last year was the first year that we had kits that coordinated with the projects. Last year was the whole rearranging and redesign of So Confident. And from what I can tell from the comments, it was quite successful. So we have stayed with that concept. We've listened to your comments about pace. That's why we're putting in bonus months instead of a new big project every month. Those bonus months are going to be a little softer in content, or at least in, in what you have to do project-wise. 
uh, nine patterns instead of 12, but we're working with those nine for variations. Um, so, and it's a wardrobe concept, but it's not like we're gonna stay with a strict colorway for the whole year. We're staying in the ranges of things, but we're gonna offer uh, groupings of things that go together. So we work really hard to put this program together. And I, I really hope you'll join us one way or the other, whether it's for the year, by the month, or whatever. Yeah, lots of great comments on the setup and the videos last year. I think that video concept was just so helpful for people to yeah. really be in their own online workshop with you from home. And all of those videos, tutorials are available still on the website so um, it was called last year so confident series 10 but on our website we have them listed as video tutorials now so you can go into that in our shop section and actually shop video tutorials so if you want to learn how to make the mace on top you can go in and purchase that workshop if you want to learn how to make the joggers you can go in and purchase that workshop so every project we've done as a video tutorial you can still purchase Right. And yes, there was someone that won a free 2022 So Confident subscription because they completed all of their garments. That's right. One person. <laughs> yeah, so lots of great comments. Well, it is a motivator, I think. Um, I, as some of you know, have taken up watercolor, and so I belong to similar things where there's a project a month and you know it would be easy to just not get the paints out but because there's a time and a date and a, a reference photo of something we're going to paint I'm all over it it's really the same kind of thing I built so confident the programming based on things that I learned from the painting community which is huge way bigger than the sewing community as I've learned but uh, I've, I've borrowed some of the same concepts of question and answer sessions and Facebook Live sessions and all of that from, from the painting world. What would you say is the time commitment for So Confident 2022? Well, each video is approximately an hour. So if you're only gonna watch them, then you've got an hour a month. Now, if you're going to make something, every project is gonna be different. And there are times when you're going to spend some time altering your pattern. There are times when you don't need to. And so let's say on the jacket pattern, uh, the sterling jacket in January, um, if you sit down and make this jacket in a hard day, you can make it in a day. But it's more fun, in my opinion, to work on something over the course of a few days, a few hours a day. So. You've got an hour for the watching of the video. You've got an hour or so for listening to the question and answer session and asking your questions and listening to other people's questions. That's two hours a month. And then let's say you make a garment a month. Is that a day? Is that two days? Whatever. Eight hours? Twelve hours? Two hours? I don't know. But, you know, if that's... So that's kind of the, the routine. So Some people have made 17 mace on tops from last year. Some people have made one. Some people have made none. There is no uh, contest about this. It is for your own. Sometimes just watching the video, you're going to learn something about a technique that you're going to apply to a totally different garment. You might learn how to put on a neck binding and you don't like the mace on top, well, you're going to put it on your t-shirt pattern that you've made your whole life. So there's, there's information that I think translates to wh whatever your sewing world is. If, you know, the sewing workshop has a certain branding, I think. Um, and the branding is, <laughs> if I'm going to wear it at my age, I'm 73 years old, I'm, if I'm going to wear it, I think some other people might appreciate wearing it too. But my daughter, who's 32, wears many, many of the patterns also. So I try to stay current with new ideas and trends and so forth without 
dressing hopefully super young, dressing my age, but I want to stay current and I want to stay fashionable. And I like going to the grocery store in my Maison top and somebody saying, well, that's an interesting top or whatever. I don't know. It's just a nice little comment that somebody can made, make. And people do notice when you're, you've made something and it's a great color on you and it's great style and they notice because clothes out there in the stores are kind of all the same thing. Unless you're really, really into the high-end stuff. Of course, that's a whole different world. Yeah, lots of comments on people's experiences and feedback on So Confident 2022, 2021. Um, there is a place to go in and see the garments and content from 2021 on our website that's called So Confident Series 10. So if you go into our shop, you'll see So Confident Series 10 listed there and it will list all 12 of our projects from the year as their online, as separate online workshops you can purchase. Or you can still purchase all of So Confident Series 10 if you'd like. It's a bit of a discounted bulk price, um, but you're able to get all the content for that year that includes all the videos. One quick question about the fabric you use for a muslin or toile. For a knit, um, well, I use a muslin, a traditional cotton muslin, when I'm testing woven garments. But when I'm making a knit garment and testing it, I'm having to use a knit. And I want to use a knit that is similar in stretch, weight, character. And sometimes that's difficult uh, to find the right thing that's less money or something like that. But most of the time, I'm kind of going for it. At, at my age, uh, I, it's only a piece of fabric. That's really how I feel about it. If I ruin it, I ruin it. But uh, because I, I have more. <laughs> but if you're afraid of, about that, and, and a lot of people are, then I suggest that you shop where you can buy uh, something on sale or uh, very inexpensive, but try to find something uh, uh, that has a similar character because you can't test a knit garment in a woven muslin. Betsy's doing a great job of posting the links in the chat. So if you guys had any questions about product or so Hi, Betsy. I didn't know you were on today. She's watching with us. Thanks, Betsy. Yeah, she's probably watching from Illinois. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can of course email us. You can email Betsy as she's listed her email, Betsy at sewingworkshop.com. You can email Linda or myself or Aaron anytime. The Sterling jacket will be available online to non-members on January 1st. So hold tight. It will be up as soon as possible, but always by the first of every month. The quantity of kits that we uh, prepare <clears throat> varies uh, from month to month. Sometimes we have lots and sometimes we don't have as many. And the Sterling jacket kits are a little bit more of a limited edition. Uh, we've, I ordered this fabric from Canada uh, some months ago and we've had it in pre preparation for January. So once you'll see the quantity on the website and as we sell them, they'll tick it down. And so you'll know uh, where you are on the ordering. And that's a fabric we probably won't order again. Doesn't mean we won't put some alternatives in there if we run out quickly. But those five colorways of, the, of that fabric, that will be it. Same, same way with the pants the next month. That fabric came from England. I'm not going to order it again, but we'll have some solids that will coordinate. But then in March, we'll have fabrics that we can probably order more of. So it varies. And I'm basing the quantities on what we sold last year, which was really tricky. It was hard to figure out who was going to order kits, who wasn't. But anyway. OK. I think that's all right. Well, let's month. say what's on sale. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So all of the fabrics are on sale for the next week. The Maison pattern, both print and digital download are on sale. The shoelaces are on sale. 
the uh, rooster scissors and the little red scissors. I had to have these. They're so darn cute. Uh, both of these scissors are on sale. <clears throat> Um, and we also have a tutorial, <coughs> two tutorials, I'm so sorry, <coughs> one tutorial, no, two tutorials, <sighs> no, one tutorial is on sale, Sewing Fashion Knits is on sale. We are offering and, and pointing out that you can sign up for the uh, Sewing the Mace on Top from January and the Joggers from February. Those are not on sale. Uh, we give So Confident members priority for things that are on sale uh, from the previous year. So, but, but do sign up if you want to know more about sewing the mace on top and sewing with knits. You're, you, you can certainly sign up for that class. On Craftsy, we, I have my sewing with two sewing with knits classes. One, the ultimate sewing knits, and the other one is the basic sewing with knits. And we have my book, which is the Sewing Knits Fit to Finish. We always have that in stock. And it's a full gamut of how you sew on knits. So, well, Alex, it was fun having you. I wish you were here every week. <laughs> but you have to go back to Cleveland again. <laughs> so, any last minute any things? Well, it was fun, guys. Good to see everyone. Yeah. Again, I can't have you guys wave your hands. I, for some reason, I want to do that. Um, but I do see a couple more questions still about So Confident um, in the patterns. So um, I just want to make sure we answer them. So if you guys have specific So Confident questions, you can email any of us, Betsy, Alex, Linda, and we'll get all of those answers. Yeah, it's either so. Betsy, Alex, or Linda at sewingworkshop.com. Yep. So don't fret. We're here yep. with you. Absolutely. So. So, All right. Yeah, thanks everyone. Stay tuned. January 1st is a big day and a big month, so you'll see the Sterling pattern released. You'll see the kits released. You'll see So Confident Online Workshop released. Um, and uh, don't forget to join So Confident. Well, January 7th is the video release. Yes, I, day and month. It's a big yeah. day and month. Right, right. So yeah. the 1st and the 7th. Yes, we release the pattern every month on the 1st along with kits, so you're able to purchase the pattern or purchase kits. And then on the 7th, which is happens to be the first Friday, so on the first Friday of every month is when we release all of the content for your workshops. Uh, Linda's video will be released, and, um, and the, the materials list, and kind of everything you need for making of the garment. And then we have the Q&As on the third Friday of Although January month. is a little bit of an exception. Yeah, Linda's out of town, so we're pushing it back. I, I'm going painting. So we're yep. pushing that one back. But generally, it's the third, third, fri uh, third Friday. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So I hope you could join us. And um, hope to see you in 2022. But yeah. you'll see me in 2022. You'll probably see me. I'll see, see you next week, week, which is 2022. <laughs> yeah. It's, so happy it's, new year. Yeah. Happy new year. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's on us. All right. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. And hope to see you so confident 22. All righty. Bye-bye.